I'd like to show you the bug that I have in my program. I'm trying to track it down by using uh, the on-chip debugging. And, you know, the game plays pretty normally uh, for a while, but after not too long, well, it's kind of a long time, um, the snake will just kind of go crazy. And, uh, you know, it's not going to be an easy thing to track down because I'm not sure if it's a bug in my program or if it's the way that I'm loading the program onto the chip like I, I, um, I'm i having some kind of uh, you know memory leak right there so all of a sudden the snake kinda jumped to the other side of the screen and started going the other way so I, you know, I have some idea of what might be causing this. Um, you know, there are, there could be, like I said, a couple of different things. Um, but how to track it down? Well, it turns out the on-chip debugger is perfect for this. And uh, what I'm going to do now is fire that up, and we'll take a look at, um, you know, kind of the best way to divide and conquer this bug. All right, so I want to go ahead and use the debugger to figure out uh, what's causing the errors that I'm seeing after I play for a while. Now, um, it really is not very hard. It just requires a few things to get um, this up and running. The first is you need to have um, your board plugged in via USB to the computer you're going to do the debugging with. Um, once and that's all taken care of here, I've got my application running. And uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to launch OpenOCD. And this is what um, makes the kind of the bridge between the hardware um, that we're running and the software that we're using to do the debugging. So um, I just go ahead and type OpenOCD, but I have to tell it what hardware I'm using. And in this case, um, OpenOCD comes with a configuration file um, for this uh, STM32 F0 discovery board. Um, and I, I do know where that is. It's uh, by default, it's stored in this directory. Let's see, scripts, board, stm32f0, discovery, cfg. There we go. Now, it might be easier to make a, a shortcut to it, um, but I'm typing it for now, so that's fine. And uh, I go ahead and press enter, and it's connected, and uh, now it's ready for the debugger to talk to it. So I'm going to switch to a different tab in my terminal, and now um, you can see the build files uh, from my project are in here. And when I compiled this, I used the dash G flag, which tells it to include the debugging handles. And I need to use that file. It's actually the main.elf file that has everything the debugger needs to associate what it sees from OpenOCD with what is actually in the code. Um, now, one really important thing is I'm using GDB, the GNU debugger. But if you just type GDB, it's not going to work because that is the debugger that's set up for the computer that you're running on. We actually need to use the version of GDB that was compiled for the hardware we're working with, which is ARM hardware. And um, that uh, tool chain is ARM, NUN, EABI, and then GDB. Um, now the other thing is I need to tell it that file that has, uh, that has been compiled with the debugging handles. So I do that. Okay, we're running now, but we're not yet connected to um, the chip. We, we need to tell this where um, the hardware is at. So our target is a remote target, and it can get there through port 3333. Uh, that's the default for OpenOCD. And uh, everything's good. I got back to the um, prompt. And, uh, you know, the first thing that I want to do here is decide... Um, where should I put a breakpoint? A breakpoint's going to halt the processor and let me um, look and see what the values are inside of there and help me uh, track down this problem. Um, and you know, I, I thought about it for a little while and I think the best place to do this is every time I eat a piece of fruit with the snake, I need the, the program generates another one. Um, and I'm going to use that uh, function called make fruit to stop the processor and look at what's going on. And so I tell it break and then I can tell it, I can tell it a line number, um, but in this case I'm just going to tell it the name of the function. Every time the function is called, I want it to stop at make fruit. And it's going to tell me, alright, one breakpoint set, and it's got the actual address in memory um, and the line in the source code, which is nice. So I can go back and look at the source code if I want and see, see where that is. Um, now the next thing I need to do when you set new breakpoints is um, go ahead and reset the processor. So I'm, uh, this is uh, kind of wonky right now with this particular hardware. 
Um, GDB should be able to reset the processor and load code natively, but it doesn't work for this chip quite yet, um, or at least with this version, which is several months old now. Um, so I'm actually going to use the command monitor, which tells GDB to just pass this command right onto OpenOCD, and uh, then I'll use a couple OpenOCD commands, and I'm going to use um, reset halt, and then uh, it tells us that that worked, and then I'm going to use the command continue to start the program running. Now as soon as I typed continue and enter, the program started running, our graphic popped up, we're all set to go, but we haven't hit a breakpoint yet, I have to start the game, so I'm going to press the select button, and boom, right off the bat we hit a breakpoint. And the reason is, as soon as it generates the snake, it's going to then generate a piece of fruit for it to eat. Um, and so at this point, I want to check the variables that I'm interested in. Now, when I um, showed you the the issue before, it was the snake, if you drive it around the screen long enough, eventually it just kind of goes crazy and shows up on different parts of the screen and, and does some odd behavior. So I'm going to look at the variables that are used to track the positions of the snake. Um, one of them is called head and one of them is called tail. So I can just print the variable head. Now, head is a global variable, so it shows up, it says, um, you know, this equals one. Uh, if it wasn't a global variable, it might not be in scope at the time that you used your breakpoint, you wouldn't be able to look at it, but um, we're lucky here that's a global variable. And then I also want to look at tail. Tail is zero. So this makes sense because I only store places, um, that I store the head and the tail of, of the snake, and I store any corners that it made. And so we should only have two nodes because you can see the snake is a straight line right now. So every time we hit a breakpoint, I don't want to have to type print head, print tail. I'm going to use another command called display. If I type display head, then it shows me head equals one. This is easier for us to read. And also, every time it hits a breakpoint, now it's automatically going to display this head equals and whatever the value is. Let's do the same thing for tail. And there it is. So um, now we want to go ahead and continue the program. And as soon as I type enter, it's going to start running again. So here we go. And there it goes. I go ahead and try and eat this piece of fruit. And as soon as I did, I hit uh, another breakpoint. Now this is strange. I just told you that uh, our um, array only stores the head, the tail, and the corners. And so I have a head, a tail, and one corner. I would expect only have three nodes. But in this case, the head is the 23rd uh, index, and the tail is zero. That's very, very strange. Well, let's let's continue again. Now, the last command that I typed was continue, and so I, all I actually need to do is press enter at this point, and it'll do continue again. Or we can use a shortcut, just type the first letter works as well. So let's go ahead and continue it. And we need to eat the fruit again. We can get there. There it is. Wow big difference now. So we have tail at 86 and head at 111. So the problem that I'm having is definitely caused by how I'm indexing these um, values. And uh, you know these values should be you know head, tail, and one, two, three, four corners. So I, sh you know, I should have a span of, of like uh, five numbers between head and tail uh, because those are indexes within an array. But I don't. And since I don't have this array set up as a circular buffer yet, I'm very quickly going to run out of space in it, and that's going to be what's causing me the problems. So in just a couple of minutes, and you know, choosing a good place to, to put a breakpoint, and kind of having some gut feeling of what values might be causing the problems, I've already um, gone ahead and uh, you know, kind of narrowed down all of the options and uh, using the debugger, and now I can fix it in code. So I spent a few minutes going over my code and I've come up with the um, offending problem. So whenever I was uh, pressing a direction on the joystick, I have the code um, assigning the variable change dir uh, a number between 1 and 4, and these uh, numbers correspond to left, up, right, and down. Um, now if change dir is 0, uh, it just tells the snake to go straight ahead. Well, the issue is, after I've made one turn, change dir is never reset to zero, and so every time I go through the state machine to move the snake by one increment, it uh, thinks that I've made another turn, and so it's racking up corners. So now 
um, I'm doing exactly what I didn't want to do. I'm storing every single pixel of the snake in my array, whereas I, I really just wanted to store the corners. So this really should be just as simple as editing this and um, reassigning that value to zero. And then it'll stay zero until um, a key is pressed in a different direction. So hopefully this gives you an idea of what's possible, and uh, I encourage you to give it a try with your next project.